All right, great. Nancy, how are you? I'm fine. It's nice to see you. Now, um, tell us something about yourself, Nancy, your connection with Spain. Okay, so I was very fortunate when I was quite young to have the opportunity to move to Spain for extended periods of time. I had a place to stay. My parents actually had a home there. And um, I took off and I went And when I was old enough. And I had um, wonderful experiences and I fell in love with Spain as who doesn't. And uh, it changed my life in so many ways. And this was in 1980 was the first time that I went and flash forward, I did end up writing a book about my experiences and how it changed me. Good, good. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit about your book in, uh, in, in, in a minute. Um, so what was the part of Spain that you went to first? What was, the, what was your first impression when you, when you arrived in the country? Was it in Andalusia? I landed. Well, we switched planes in Madrid, and then I landed officially in Malaga. And first things first, you would get off the plane on the tarmac. There would be two rows of Guardia Civil with machine guns. And coming from New York, that was quite a shock. I mean, we didn't, we don't have machine guns on the. Oh, well, people have guns here, that's for sure. But we don't have machine guns on on people walking around, and it was it was an experience to see that every time you get off the plane, and it was an exciting experience in some ways. Yeah, I knew I wasn't so, doing anything wrong, so I had no, no reason no, to no. be fearful, but it was no, exciting no, to see. Yeah, so it was a well, well, long time ago, I suppose, and some of the differences, of course. That's right, because, I mean, Spain obviously was at a different time back then, coming out of the, um, the political system that it had back in the day and coming from a place like New York, is it, Nancy, where you're based? Yes, yeah, so I'm from New York, and I was living in Manhattan, and in the 70s, the, Manhattan was quite a difficult place to live, and I was a social worker. So I was truthfully in some dangerous situations, and then I had this opportunity to move, and I did. And it was so great to go to see the mountains, and you see just flowers everywhere. And I, I went to the apartment that my parents had, and saw the, the Mediterranean from my window. I saw mountains when I turned around. It was just beautiful, which mm. it still is, of course. And um, that it was wonderful to have that. New York is beautiful in its own way, but in a very different way. Mm. So what led your parents to, to, to buy property here? My father had some business in Spain and loved Spain. And, you know, my parents were of the age where they were fascinated by the Spanish Civil War and Franco and the change. And it, it just was a very interesting story. Certain news stories appeal to you for different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, my, my father particularly just loved the music, the food, the culture. Just every, For some reason, that was his thing, like to mm -hmm. just be fascinated by the country Spain. I don't know why other than I know he was interested in the news but um, he went at the first moment that my parents had enough money to travel they, they went to Spain first my, they landed they stood on a mountain and said this is it we're, we're moving here and and they bought the, there was a lot of construction and this was um, in the early 70s very very early 70s uh, they purchased property and and it was just wonderful. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Uh, my parents honestly never lived in Spain. I did. I, I stayed in their place, but they never did. Okay, great. And so do you still come uh, frequently? I do. I'm now I'm married. I have children. I have grandchildren. And whenever, whenever I have the opportunity to go either alone and with any combination of those people I just mentioned, I go, I've gone alone and I've gone alone with three children. I've gone alone with my, I've just done a lot because it is in a sense, a uh, feels like home to me. Um, I, we almost always stay in Andalusia, some area, but we do go, um, to other places in Spain. I mean, we, we use that as a jumping off point and we go, I, I have traveled quite a bit within Spain, probably more, much more so in Spain than I have in the United States. Okay, great. So t tell us some of the places you've been to. Well, I guess the place that perhaps is most in my heart is Granada. I, it, again, nothing like this exists in America. And uh, to have that experience, and I do write about how seeing the 
the things from Christopher Columbus, seeing things from the from Isabella and Ferdinand. You learn about Ferdinand, Isabella and Ferdinand when you're in really and truly in nursery school. When it's um, Columbus Day or when it's Thanksgiving, you actually learn about this. And you know, at 1492, we all know, you know, Columbus sailed the ocean boom. 1492, you learn about this in nursery school. So, they, they, in a sense, we don't have kings and queens. They, in some sense, to to me, I would think is more the king and queen here than even the British, you know, um, oh, which really? are much more associated with because. Uh, you don't learn about the king and queen of England when you're in nursery school, but you do learn about Ferdinand and Isabella when you're in nursery mm -hmm. school. So, and I know this from my children too, and, and my grandchildren. So, you there is some sort of bond that that I think exists between our countries, yeah. and uh, and well, well, what's in my heart, heart anyway. Well, obviously, if it wasn't for that 1492 date, probably you wouldn't be where you are, Nancy. Do you know what I mean? So, so um, obviously, it's a, it's a pretty important thing in uh, American history. That's exactly right. Even though in the last few years it's become a little bit controversial, the Columbus Day, from what we read here in Spain, anyway. But um, oh, you know, oh, it's very controversial. Yes, and taking down statues and. There's, there's, there's definitely a lot of controversy with that. So, so Granada, Cordoba, Madrid, Barcelona, Almeria. I think I wrote to you about how much I do love Almeria. I love Cabo, Cabo de Gata. I love it there. Um, I've been in the northwest corner. I've been in Santiago de Compostela okay. and all the places in between. And I've been, I've driven to Portugal a few times from Mar Marbella, say so. Um, I know that route. I have, oh, Seville. I, Seville, I love Seville. I, I love every place. I, honestly, I can't imagine, I, I can't think of one place where I've been to that I was disappointed or, or would say, don't go there. You know, it's, it's just yeah. been a wonderful traveling experience. And, and I will say I've been to other countries, but we do use Spain for our, our jumping off point. Mm. Yeah, I know just through the the channel that I have here and the, some of the videos that I put out that there are a lot of people in the states that do watch the content, and there are a lot of people that are uh, fascinated with Spain for, for for one thing or another. And and maybe it is you know that 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 history side of it that you do learn, or maybe it's the the more modern um, uh, American authors that were fascinated with Spain as well. I mean, we all know the stories oh, about Hemingway, the Hemingways and the awesome yeah. yeah. The, the Orson Welles yeah. and people like that, and there was also um, a lot of um, uh, actresses. I think were in love with Spain back in the day. The uh, Ava Gardners and people Ava like Gardner. that. So that's it. Yeah. So I mean, there is that. There is that connection, isn't there? There is a very strong connection. Yes, mm -hmm. and exactly um, right. and I'm glad that there is. I'm glad there is, and I'm I'm glad I got to experience it the way I have. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Now, in the years that you've been coming to the country so you said that back in the early 80s was the first time and i don't know when the last time was but i suppose before the pandemic but right before uh, COVID, i was there that's a few it. months uh, yeah uh -huh. okay. no problem. so we yeah yeah so, so we're talking what 40 years nancy so how how spain changed over that time in your eyes I would say um, in Andalusia, where this, where I was always based and where I'm much more familiar with uh, things that sites that used to be mountaintops are now have, have residences, you know, or yeah. have buildings, yeah. places that were empty lots, you know, or, or have been built on. I'll tell you one thing. Oh, I can think of something that's um, I found interesting, and I, I don't think it exists now. When there would be like a, a plot of land that was blocked off from the public, they would have walls, and on the top there would be broken pieces of glass. Like instead of barbed wire, I don't know if they still do that, but that that would be an illegal thing in America. We were not allowed oh, to well, have. Uh, yeah, well, it's it's illegal here as well, but people. <laughs> People do it still. You don't see it in cities like Madrid or, or you know, in cities like Malaga. I imagine you don't see these things. But when you go into the smaller villages, you do see people still with uh, yeah. broken bottles that they've been that the, the into shards the have. Yeah, that's right. They've been stuck into the concrete as a deterrent for people jumping over. And the then walls, if there right. would be um, carnivals, there yeah. would be merry-go-rounds, horses with real with real horses going oh, really? around yeah. in circles. 
you know, and again, like even in 1980 and before 1980, that is when, since I'm a child, I mean, that would never have been allowed here. Uh, um, you, or you, you wouldn't see those things now. <laughs> I, I, the I, animal, the I imagine animal, the, some places in the world, but I, I would hope not in Spain and no, definitely no, not no. in America. Even then in America, that would not have been allowed. But, no, no, no. The, 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 the animal rights uh, groups, I don't think, would allow real ponies on America around nowadays. No, I don't think so. Yeah. All right, good. So it's definitely changed over the years in these things that, that you have seen. I would just, the biggest change, of course, would be the amount of construction. And, yeah. and how the streets have changed and the look changed and certain views that you would have now are very different. But um, you still, uh, the feel, I would say, is relatively the same. Or that's why I keep going back. I love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the construction side is interesting because the, the area that we're talking about there down in Malaga and um, okay. I suppose Cabo de Gata is a bit different because it hasn't oh, got yeah. the mass hasn't got the mass construction, but the Mediterranean is the fastest growing area in Spain out, outside the capital city. So, but so, I'm guessing uh, since the 70s or the 60s, even. Oh, of it, course, it, yeah. It's the fastest growing, I'm guessing. I don't know for sure, but there, every time you would go, there, there would be sites. And of course, you know, the ubiquitous cranes yeah. that you see, yeah. you know, in, in the site. Yeah. I mean, we're, to, uh, we're talking about places that were fishing villages, you know. So even if you go back to a place like Benny Dorm 50 years ago, it was a, it was a village. And uh, I imagine that was the similar case for all of those places along the Costa del Sol as well, the Fuengirolas, the Benalmarinas, the Mijas, and all of those places would have been small villages that have just basically just become yes. an extension yes. of Malaga City, you know. Yes, yes. I which, which I love also. I love the city of Malaga. It's beautiful. That has changed very, very much um, mm -hmm. since uh, 1980. And, yeah, and for, well, I would yeah. say it was always lovely. It's it's so much fun, and it's so great to go there yeah. now. I, I was there, on, I think, on my last trip. I was there in yeah. 2019. It was wonderful. Um, there a lot more promenades and um it, it just has a great feel. And, and mm. of course, when I was there, a museum was not there. And even though I'm not such a Picasso fan, it was a wonderful museum. And, you know, obviously we have great museums, and you have in Madrid, and I have in New York. But, but actually the museum, the Picasso Museum, I was much more interested in it than I planned on being. I didn't think I was going to enjoy it as much as I did. Yeah, yeah. Well, a point that you mentioned there, I think a, a characteristic of a lot of Spanish cities Obviously, before tourism became the big thing here in Spain, they weren't they weren't cities that were uh, facing the ocean. Let's say a lot of the times they were close to the ocean. There was a there was a port blocking the blocking the views, and I think that was Valencia City was like that. Barcelona until the Olympics was a little bit close to the sea as well. So the sea was a place where people worked, but it wasn't a thing to enjoy. Whereas maybe in the states. Uh, in the UK, the, the sea became a, a place where you would spend your holidays, whereas um, here in Spain, probably from the 70s on, that also became the case, hence the, hence the, the construction as people started to, to move to those areas for a, as a holiday destination or to live, yeah. And Malaga, of course, today completely changed, and it, it's, it's, it's beautiful. The, the beautiful. ocean is the key. That's exactly right. Good. Now, your experiences led you to write a book, um, uh, I'll get you to tell us the title of the book, uh, Nancy. It's called This Nearly Was Mine, which the title kind of says it all. It really was a life that was nearly mine. I really was thinking about becoming an expat the way you did. I Perhaps I wasn't as brave as you are, Stuart. Um, I had, my life was different uh, in those days. And again, I'm going back to 1980, but there was a, a point that I really had to make a decision whether I wanted, and the, if you look at the cover of my book, I took a very, very beautiful street in Cordoba, and it's like, this nearly was mine, this is so beautiful, and I could have lived here, I could have had a life here, and and I guess that's what the book was about, and I think that um, whether it's Spain or another city or another spouse or another uh, lifestyle, even in within your own country, I think people do think about that. They think, well, if I had made different choices, how different my life would have been. So this nearly was mine is a song from a, a, a Broadway show, South Pacific, which was based on the book Tales of the South Pacific. And 
that that's near and dear to my heart and the song was and so I used that title for my book I was able to and uh, but that's that's really it's it's a love story for sure but it's really more almost my valentine to Spain how much how wonderful it was for me to have the experiences living there how it changed me and I guess like the subtext was if you have opportunities to do something you, it really does can change your life for yeah, so yeah. much the better that's right that's right and uh, traveling to any foreign country i think really opens your eyes and gives you the inspiration to in your sense nancy is a writer to write a book about that and um even though i think we spoke about this the first time we we we, we chatted that it's it's it is fiction but it is based on something that could have happened right oh absolutely absolutely something um, and I'm waiting for your book, Stuart. <laughs> you you uh, must be a writer of sorts. You you no, no, speak I'm a so eloquently. I'm, no, I'm a terrible I'm a terrible writer. My I don't my, my father was a journalist, so I I didn't go oh, down oh, that. There you go. There you go. I don't believe that you're a terrible writer. And because no, no. I I know that you speak. You know I do have um, a degree in linguistics, and I <laughs> do and like you. I teach. I can. I have the the qualifications to teach English to speakers of other yeah. languages. So I, I am pretty attuned to sp people's um, speech patterns. And mm. uh, while we're from two different English speaking countries, I could tell that you would be a great writer. And I'm, I'm just to backtrack one second. I just want to tell you how thankful I am that I am able to watch your show because I, I learned so much from it and I appreciate that. So I had to stick that in there for you. <laughs> oh, thank, <laughs> thanks, I mean thanks it. For it comes from my heart. I watch you every single night. Oh, well, that, thank, thank you for your support. The, uh, yeah, the idea that um, I came up with, and I mean, I've spoken about this on the channel was just to put it out there, you know, to, to get a, to, to, to put out what's, well, now it's just basically I'm putting out what's happening in Spain for people that are interested from a news point of view and talking about different things that are going on because Spain's a country that's all, it always has something going on politically or it always has something going on socially. There's always something happening somewhere. So it is an interesting country. And then one day I'll go back to, to try uh, to making uh, some more travel videos if we, if we can, if we can get out and about, which we can at the moment, but still there's, some problems with traveling as we know it's not it's not as easy as it was three years ago and um the idea is that to just to show people what spain is from through my eyes basically so whether you i suppose you know as, as a, a creator yourself nancy whether you put it down uh in a book or whether you do it in a visual form you are creating something which and you are trying to uh show people your point of view and or show people of Spain through your eyes, which is what you did in your book, and it's what I try to do through my bad videos sometimes. But you've it done is what it is. That's not me. Sorry, I'm, I'm glad that you do it. Honestly, we don't get as much news uh, that I think we should be getting here that comes organically. I mean, if you look for it, if you search for it, it's there. Yeah. But it, it, unless I'm searching for it, and I'm so glad that I found you to call the information from the different sources. You know, and you'll say, well, this is a leftist, typically a leftist view, but I think it's a, it's a point that you should know uh, how people think. And, and that's important for me to see, you know, what another person's opinion of, of yeah. um, the way the news is delivered and then how accurate it might be or is there any open. You, you do mention that and I like that. I appreciate that. Well, something that caught my attention with what you said before was that your parents were fascinated with that with that civil war, Spain, right? How a how a yeah. European country can fall into a civil war when others are in a you know it's it, it's it's an interesting history, right? It was an interesting history. The whole concept of fascism mm. when you you know you lived your whole life in, in the United States and could that even oh my God, what's going on now in this world? Um, but but it was happening in say another country at that time, yeah, and yeah. Uh, it, it was a very interesting story. And I guess for the people, younger viewers who uh, I it was before my time. <laughs> Few things were apparently, but your viewers seem to be much younger than I am. But it it is a very interesting story what happened in the Spanish Civil War. And it, to me, what's almost more interesting was how it ended up going back after fascism. You know, to yeah. what ended up happening after Franco died, mm -hmm. which is when I sort of came into the picture. It was really relatively yeah. new. 
And um, well, 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 that that prob- that was an interesting time, I imagine. In Spain, they call it. <clears throat> there's a name for that period of time. The early '80s was called the Movida. You know, when when the the strict regime went out the window and Spain had a freedom which it doesn't have now, you know. I mean, Spain, mm-hmm. Spain's a fairly liberal country when it comes to uh, alcohol drinking and smoking uh, hashish and all of those things. You know, the police look the other way a lot of the times, whereas in Australia, for example, you know, you get caught, you get in trouble doing those things, uh, especially when it comes to drugs. The States has opened up a lot now, so that's, you know, uh, probably a lot different than it was. Canada's you know, just- you know, in a different league. Um, I, you're reminding me, you asked me about my parents. I remember before I left, and again, this was in 1980, my father said, don't jaywalk. And of course, in New York, like jaywalking is not even a thing. Like you yeah. would never, uh, it, you would never even think of not jaywalking. So he goes like, I know, like you can't live there the way you live here. You can't dress there the same way. You can't, jay- I remember like a big thing was don't jaywalk. And I, I honestly don't even know if that was a thing, but that's what he told me. Well, it's funny because I see jet people jaywalking all the time. <laughs> people, but that's people, now, but yeah, that's yeah. now, but he was there during Franco time. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so he was just down. coming off. Yeah, he's just coming off of those years because that's really when my parents were spending the most time. Franco was alive then, oh. and then, and then of course when Franco died and my parents went, my father was very fascinated with the topless beaches because we don't have them really in America. I mean, you have to really search high and low, but here, but in Spain, after Franco died, it was just everywhere, yeah, and it yeah. was. It's quite a treat yeah. <laughs> for my well, father and my children, by the way. When I ended up taking, I have two boys, and I, when I took them to Spain when they were very, very young, their eyes popped out of their heads. They were so excited. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I suppose that that was it. So it went from you know being very strict back then to, to basically anything goes. And um, mm-hmm. you even, uh, I remember the, the, even the, watching Spanish movies and documentaries at that time, and it was the Northern Europeans coming down and, and wearing bikinis yes. that started to, you know, to push those things at the beaches and so forth. And, um, and, of course, when it came, you know, in the 1980s, was basically when the country went wild, and um, as a lot of other countries did back in the eighties, they were fairly wild times for for various substance use, as we know. But um, Spain was a country where you know I think it still is quite liberal in that sense. As I said, drugs might not like drugs like cannabis might not be mm-hmm. legal, but they are tolerated, and uh, and um, and uh, you see you can quite often smell. The smoke when you go into some of those uh, night areas in the country. That's right. Yeah. So, but it is a, a fascinating country, and it, it is um, something that does catch a lot of people's attention. And as you said, unfortunately, a lot of the news isn't making the the American news cycle or the British news cycle because obviously you've got your own stuff going on, which people are interested more. So you have to uh, you have to go out of your way sometimes to find news about countries like Spain. Now, tell us about the future plans, Nancy. Planning to come back soon. Yes, I am. I do have a trip booked in September. I hope that COVID is not going to emerge as another problem, uh, re-emerge, shall we say, in the severity that it's been. Um, I have cancellation insurance, of course, but I am planning to come. So the deal is, is because of the way I feel about Spain, when the time comes for me to retire, um, I do hope to be able to spend a few months of the year in Spain. Right now, as you know, it would only be three months at a time. I don't want to become a complete expat. Like I, I as much as I would love to live there a lot, <laughs> I, and many, many months. Um, I, I have children, I have grandchildren, I, and right now I have my mother, and I don't want to leave for any extended periods of time. But um, I do want to spend a lot of time, and that's what each trip that we go, even for the past many, many years before COVID, we would look in different areas to see, well, maybe we want to live here, or maybe we want to live in different areas. So it, it isn't just the Marbella area where we go, but um, yeah. we do try. And this time we're going to go to the East Coast, because I've never been there. You mentioned Benidorm. We are going to stay um, in, in somewhere in between of Valencia and um, 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 Alicante. Alicante. 
Okay. Right. All right. I've never been there. I've never been. I've been to Albany and I love it, but I haven't been um, in, in that section. And I would like to go. I've been to Mallorca, but I haven't been to the other Balearic Islands. So oh, I'd like oh, to, okay. to use that again as a jumping off point. The travel around the East Coast. Yeah, that's yeah nice. because it looks beautiful. I mean, it you've been there. Beautiful. You've been there, I know. It looks beautiful. And why not? You know? Um, yeah. uh, I, I will say I'm much more comfortable in Andalusia. And when people visit, like to have the opportunity to take them to Sevilla or to take them to Granada, uh, Cordoba, then, you know, uh, that would be a, a much bigger yeah. trip for me. Yeah. All right, great. When so people we'll come to visit you, where do you take them? People normally just come for a few days and we just show them around Madrid and uh, they've already got their plans, you know, sort of sort of uh, done already, so we don't try to interfere with that. But whenever my parents come, we try to go to a different place. And right. uh, we normally go north. From here, because I I have a preference for the north of the country, and uh, so we've been to mm -hmm. places like Aragon. So I'd like to get off the beaten track a little bit. So we go to places like Aragon, Zaragoza, Teruel, Huesca, um, the Cas Castilla-La Mancha. Both Castillas are quite interesting city for, for for cities and history. Uh, you mentioned um, Isabel and Fernando, of course. That was the you know the Catholic kings. They were. That was their domain. Uh, the north of the country, further, the Asturias, the Cantabria, places like that. I mean, it's impossible to see everywhere, basically, but that's normally where I like to, 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 to take people. So a bit off the beaten track rather than going to a, a very touristy city like um, Seville or somewhere like that where, you know, where. Hey, I love Seville. Don't even. <laughs> so no, uh, for me, yeah, it's it's a great city, but you have to share it with uh, thousands of other tourists always at the same time. Whereas if you go to a city like Zamora, you can, uh, yeah. you're not going to see tourists there. You know, I actually have not been up there, although I feel like I have because I watch movies from there all the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I must have seen Ocho Apaidos about five times. <laughs> Well, you know, yeah, well, that yeah, well, think that was the Basque country in Seville. That's exactly right. Yeah, that was the that was those the, the contrast between. Very bit, it's a bit of a stereotypical. Movie. Oh, it, it, <laughs> it was as silly as could be, and I, know, I typically don't do silly. Like I'm not a, a person that appreciates silly things, yeah. but I did love that movie, and I love the feel of, of of being there, and 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 I was laughing so much at the differences between yeah. the people. The north and the south, the personalities. In well, it. I think it's one of the. I think I think it's one of the most popular Spanish movies here, at least of all, of all time. Yeah. Well, so I, I think the year that it came out, it was, it certainly was. Um, yeah, you know, think so. here in America, not everybody would know about it, but but no. I, I loved it. I loved it because I got to see so much of a Basque country where I had never been. And then, of course, the uh, you know everything. Yeah, it's just yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it, the contrast. All right, great, Nancy. We'll start to wrap it up because we've been yeah. going for a while here now. So good speaking to you. Okay, you too. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye-bye.